I did not expect to win this one at all, and the pressure on the life total was just too much. Hello YouTube, I'm Okunus Fine Day, and today we are going to have a look at Kambal, Console of Allocation and Historic Brawl. This deck aims to win by going into an Ors of Control style uh, kind of game plan, while simultaneously draining the opponent out with the ability of Kambal, Console of Allocation. So, um, first and foremost, let's address the elephant in the room. What happens if the opponent is on a creature-heavy strategy? Well, then our just general Ors of um, Control shell is very good against that. We have board wipes, um, we have removal, and we can incidentally gain like two or three uh, triggers off of Kambal, which is already very good. Against, for example, moderate aggro decks, Kambal is just a uh, house, because the way they close the game out is with the burn spells, and those are the cards that are basically negated by Kambal's ability. So, um, and then if we play against control decks, we play him, um, and he just does a lot, a lot of damage. So, um, yeah, basically he's good against uh, pretty much uh, most of the decks in the field. And if he's not good, uh, probably the rest of the deck is very good against that deck. Um, yeah, uh, we have just basically no real surprises here. Uh, thought seizes, inquisitions, just general hand hate. We have mana rocks to ramp into our board wipes, but we got also access to white board wipes. We have a bunch of cards um, that draws cards. Sigana Splendor. Uh, we while we don't have a lot of white spells to gain life off of the last line of text. We do just gain a lot of life in general, so uh, that can just keep our hand uh, nice and full, basically. Um, we also use the fact that K uh, Kambal deals damage to the opponent, so cards like Turgrid, God of Fright, uh, Torment of Scarabs, Torment of Hellfire, and Cruel Reality really, really pressure the opponent's uh, life total and can just end the game earlier than expected a lot of the times. Um, we also use tutors like Demonic Bargain, Search for Glory and um, Grim Tutor to basically search what we need and Bola Citadel is a card that uh, we can just basically sink our uh, life into it. There are some life gain payoffs I don't play. For example, Aetherflux Reservoir is not in the deck because I feel like if we get that much life of Kambal, at the same time they also t took that much damage from him and then they should basically already be dead. So that's why I don't use um, Aether Flux Reservoir for example. And yeah, uh, mana base, uh, really nothing fancy going on. I only have one colorless land and that's the blast zone. Everything else is basically color fixing or just additional utility with man lands and castles. And um, yeah, uh, <laughs> let's jump right in some gameplay. If you do enjoy it, uh, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And if you don't enjoy it, just comment in the comment section how much you hate this video. Um, let's go. We are ready to play against Feather the Redeemed. And oh boy, Kambal should do some amount of work here for sure. Um, let's hide some information. Okay, Esper Sentinel. Um, I think I don't want to let them to draw cards, so I'm just going to go Thoughtseize. Just very, very slowly. Um, I don't want them to have... I think I don't want them to have this sheltering light. <clears throat> Next turn I can play Kambal. Uh, they top deck with carry Zeph, that is fine. Yep, and then the turn afterwards. I'm, I I just w don't want them to draw cards here. Basically, I'm just going to go slow and very methodical about this. Um, I know what they have in hand, so I just take the one damage here. <clears throat> yep, sure, carry Zeph. That's fine. If they play this Paladin class, I can eventually. I like. I'm looking at cracking this. Blasts on for one. Um, uh, the question is, do I do that right now or do I do that next turn? 
They currently don't have any threatening cards here. So the upside of doing the Mindstone, of, of doing Blast Zone now is that I can go with Esper Sentinel next turn. The problem is that the Shepherd of the Flock can return one of these two. So that might just not be worth it in the end. So let's ramp. If they didn't have the Shepherd to save one of these, I think the two for one would just be pretty, pretty good here. So let's see. A white carries F. And I would love to get rid of this Esper Sentinel. If they drew a buff. Nope, they didn't. They used the Shepherd of the Flock to return it to hand. That's fine. And if they replay this Esper Sentinel, I am going to crack the blast zone probably if they don't then they likely only have one card on the field yep and that really makes me want to play this eldest reborn which i am going to do perfect uh, got all the options covered basically um don't think they have haste and pressuring their life total is in this specific deck is actually really relevant like every point of damage matters because Cabal will eventually deal so much damage to them. Yep, sure. Cabal. Mm -hmm. So the question is Elixir versus Cabal, but I assume that I'm supposed to play the Cabal here just for the reason that... Um, I could also go Elixir pay for this Esper Sentinel, um, but I, maybe I'm supposed to play Cabal here for because, um, wait, why am I? Yeah, they don't have anything in hand. Yeah, I think just cracking this blast zone now is probably the most amount of value I can get here. Yep. Yeah, that, that's just so juicy. Um, prevents them from attacking in with things. Keeps the board clean if they commit to this board with Feather plus Shepherd. I am going to wipe that and after that, I, yeah. They didn't have a chance, really. I could... Uh, what could I bring back with this Aldous Reborn? Carry Zeft to pressure the life total. Esper Sentinel to draw maybe a bit of cards. Probably would have taken the Carry Zeft for damage. GG. We are ready to play against the Yara. First off, Lockthwain. And our life gain should help us not get drained out immediately. Uh, I actually do like this car, uh, this hand. So we fetch a Black Source on turn 1, I assume. Um... Uh, now with this Palaka Predation hand, I'm kind of inclined to just go with um, this tapped and then fetch a white off of that, so we have double white, but this play is kind of awkward because it still leaves our um, Castle Lockthwain. Uh, it lets our Castle Lockthwain enter the battlefield tapped. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to kill the Sierra right now. Um, yeah, let's go. And if they have removal, that's fine. Serrated Scorpion. Mm -hmm. Their plan is on draining me out here. Uh, but we can stabilize our life total um, with Cabal. This is definitely a matchup where our life total is under pressure, not theirs. So. Mm hmm. Yep. Um. I think I'm supposed to maybe... I could get the ball rolling with this Torment of Scarabs, but uh, I just assume that... Oh, we just get rid of this. And I kind of want to draw lands here, uh, so maybe... I'm not cracking this Fable Passage for now. Maybe I do want to stop drawing lands though, not sure. Lolth Spider Queen, ay ay ay. Minus, yep. And... Oh, they swing in immediately. No patience, huh? Um, crack this because I probably want to draw, uh, increase my chances of drawing a board wipe now. Yep. Uh, good thing I can get rid of this Lolth here. Which is going to be nice. In exchange for mm hmm. Um, yep. Play 
you wait for absence you and round, play Turgrid and hope basically. <laughs> this is like a worse version of the backside of Turgrid uh, because we don't have the option of untapping it for 4 mana. But I think it's fine. This Eldest Reborn is not the optimal on the sacrifice part, uh, op most optimal card on the sacrifice part, but it does give us the Loth back, which is great. So. Um, oh, yeah, just in time. Yeah, now this Eldest Reborn is going to be hopefully, like, really pull ahead, right? Ah, oh, no. It's not. It's not, I repeat, it's not. Unless they attack. Unless they attack. They've shown previously that they're willing just to attack with these tokens whenever they can. Um, beat the swarm, sure. Swing with the token. Greedy? Well, I don't even know if that's considered being greedy, honestly. Okay, they swing in. So, I hope, like, if they only just play one creature, I can let that get sacrificed with the Seldish Reborn. Okay, they deal damage. And before they have to sacrifice the token at the end of combat, they're going to sacrifice it with a Deadly Dispute. That is fine. <clears throat> If they don't play anything, maybe I'm supposed to just take this turn off, basically, and Torment of Hailfire them. Um, so that would be 5-6. What the, what would that even accomplish? Not much, I assume. If I top deck a land, I can go Kambal into Castle Locks my next turn, actually. Uh, it's awkward that between Castle Lockthway and Castle Ardenvale, Eldest Reborn and Kambal, I can only do one of these options. Um, so maybe I'm just supposed to x equals 6 here on this Torment of Hellfire. <clears throat> they can sacrifice treasures, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's reasonable. Sacrifice a clue, that's fine. They should have, in response to the Torment of Hellfire, I believe they should have just cracked the um, uh, clue to draw the card and then they could have discarded and then just still see what they wanted to do. A Yara. Oh yes, perfect, perfect. Because now, Eldest Reborn forcing them to sacrifice the Yara and then the Cold Steel Heart for Black probably. Yeah. Black. Sure. Um. Gaunty. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. I have some really, really high value cards in my um, deck. So I'm not really happy about that. Mm hmm. But the upside is, if I top deck a land, I can go Kambal into Castle Unveil activation, which is probably more valuable. The pens, right? You discard a card opponent, please. Uh, no. I, I just, I think just getting a card here is worth the two life, probably. Hmm. I have a strong feeling that they have a big Planeswalker coming up here. Yup. Mm-hmm, they minus, I assume. Welcome to mm -hmm. college class. Let's draw a card here. Let's see what's what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yep. And is there something Yeah, we want to put this in commands on. We have enough high value targets that they This is ours, right? So we put a stop in our upkeep and kill it now, so we can get this back, I assume, because it gives us life. And then Onyx plus, and then hopefully get a board wipe. Yep. That's Professor Onyx to you. Um. Sure. We just play Ugin. 
and I think we plus. We can also play a Mind Stone now. Past turn. Oh, this is this is an AI turn. Yeah, our life total is just really going down here. Uh, both of us. Um, if I get to untap with an Onyx, though, I think I'm fine. <clears throat> I go down to three life. Wow, I don't get to untap with an Onyx, and they bring back the North. Holy moly. Okay, um... I think I'm supposed to jump this. Oh, wow, wow. Absolutely insane. Um, this game is a back and forth for sure. <sighs> um... One, two, three, four. I go down to one basically here, right? Because no, I can't even activate the Castle Arden Vale to create an additional blocker. So yeah, I have to get desperate here. What do I off the top? But even then, that doesn't necessarily save me from this loth. Um, wrong order, but I think I'm dead here. Yeah, that blood in the snow did it. Wow, uh, that is a good game, and I am going to go out on my own terms. Agonizing remorse. And... Ah, there you go. GG! Oh, that was a super, super close game. Loved every second of it. <laughs> we are ready to play against Gaunty, Lord of Luxury. This should be a bad matchup for us, I think. Um, because we can only reactively deal with Gonti. And uh, we, well, like after he hit the field basically. So that is going to be really annoying because he can just get a lot of high value targets from us. Uh, this is a turn for like Elspeth's Conqueror's Death or Kaya though. So I'm liking that. Um, start out on the Fatal Passage for Black. In case we don't draw like another land and we need these to come into play untapped yep <clears throat> in case snarl that is fine let's see mm -hmm. ramp check for traps I assume they take the Kaya archive Elspeth Celestis one of them, right? <laughs> not sure what they take here, to be honest, not sure. Um, okay, Kaya is fair. Oh, they don't know about this Onyx though. Which is great. Which is really, really great. Treasure map? That's fine. Play the land they know about. And, uh... Key to the Archive. Let's see... Draw a card, discard a card. Um, time Warp is not too useful. Claim the Forestborn is not too useful. Putrefy. All of these don't seem that optimal, honestly. Uh, would I rather have a Elspeth's Conqueror's Death versus a Time Warp, though? Um, if I knew for a fact that I'm going to untap with Onyx, Time Warp would be nice. Um, I can Time Warp plus... Kambal next turn. Uh, I guess that's pretty cool. And I don't... Th ah, this is so much value though, and I need the value, right? Hmm. They're going to play Gaunti, I'm going to Elspeth's Conquest at it. Hmm. Uh, let's, let's go for this play. Let's see what happens, basically. Let's see what happens. Um... Hmm. Interesting. I'm really not sure if this was correct. I really want a time warp with a planeswalker on the field. Okay, Drillbird taking the Onyx. Yeah, and now I'm... Now I wish I had this Elspeth Congress death. Yeah, this is going to be really problematic. Oh, uh, oh wait, this is amazing. Because... I tutor for a card, and then I'm still able to time walk here. Oh my god, and I think it's just going to be Bola Citadel, right? Time warp, 
Ow, um, that worked out really well. Insane. Yup, bolus the citadel and fire, fire the laser. Oh, it's an infernal grasp. Hmm. Anyways, um, yeah, beautiful, awesome, amazing, insane card. <laughs> Uh, probably karma from what I top decked on the like Bola Citadel uh, mono black video I did recently with um, the three mana tutor commander. Oh man, <laughs> uh, this is not optimal. Play land opponent. No, you want to, but honestly. I kind of don't want to Infernal Grasp this because I know the Infernal Grasp is not going to be super valuable here for them. Okay. Sure. Okay, and let's start doing this. Yes. Idle. Land. Thoughtseize. And a Hagra Mauling? Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. Blood in the Snow is probably good. Hey, this might be my Gaunty list. I put. No, 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 it's not. Because I didn't play Gr Drillbit. But they, they, they have. They're playing similar cards. I, I gotta respect that. Um, Not sure if I'm supposed to play this Hagram Walling off the top. Maybe. Wrath of God. I'm probably sh supposed to not play that Wrath of God, though. So, Celestis, make it night. Gain more life, which is really valuable. We can discard this land. Mm hmm. Uh, we have already played land, correct? Yeah, correct. Um, and then probably just going to play the Cabal. Mm hmm. And if they want to, like, Henrika Domnathi and then Symmetrical Sacrifice, we can animate the Idol. Which is pretty sneaky. But it's just likely that they're going to use the Blood Shifters here. Yes, draw and discard. Beautiful. Don't need this land. Getting enough from the Citadel. Um, so I, I assume the first action here is going to be Kambal dying from this Blood Shifters Thirst. Um, let's see. Ugin the Ineffable. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that, unlucky. Our deck has answers to answer our deck, apparently. <laughs> and I assume if they spend two treasures, they can kill Kambal, but I don't think that's worth it because they can still kill the Uganov of this Guardian Idol. Maybe they will miss that. Enrika, yes. If they draw a card here, I can Elspeth's Nightmare that as well. So that is going to be pretty neat. Yep, and that is going to be annoying for the opponent. I think let's draw a discard first with the Celestis. Yep. Mm-hmm, don't need that, I think. I don't think I will need the Wrath of God either, though. Um, Elspeth's Nightmare. Yep, and I think I will just swing in here with this idol just get a bit more pressure on the life total because that's how we need to kill them Experience. by reducing their life total to zero right um if they double i'm going to keep this land on top so i can have something to discard to the celestis i think i have enough lands for the rest of uh, like enough mana for the rest of the game <clears throat> What's coming up next? Um, Elspeth's Nightmare is pretty great. Oh, okay, sure. Making me sacrifice my Cabal, I see. Um, put it into Command Zone, thank you. Uh, they will be able to get back this Ugin the Ineffable or the Onyx from my graveyard later on, which is actually quite scary. Hmm, really scary. Yeah, Gaunty is a good deck against us. Good deck against us. Um, 
don't think I will play this land to discard it to the Elder Spell, I assume. So, sequencing is important here, because now we gain one life of this Splendor. And just pass turn, I think. Discard this land. Yep. Um... Not even sure which card, like, which card is which and like who owns what card at this point. Is that their Elders Reborn or was that my Elders Reborn? I think it's theirs. Okay. Um, goodbye. And now they get to play my Phyrexian Arena. Uh, but hopefully that just drains them out eventually, right? <gasps> Ooh. Okay, we're talking. Filter cards. Go, Celestis. Value. Yes. Oh my god. That is insanity. Um. They will get back my Ugin, though. To destroy the cruel reality. But they still have to sacrifice one creature. Uh, it's going to be Gaunty, though. And that's the problem. Man. Uh, no, maybe, maybe I was just supposed to keep that in hand so they get something different back. But now, because now it's the Ugin, yeah, it's the Ugin minus a cruel reality. And I was just supposed to not play anything there. Mm. Really difficult to know. Swing in. Yep, not blocking. Not blocking. Hmm. You're gaining a lot of advantage from this Gonti. And that is the... Like, this is the matchup where Kambal struggles. Um, because he doesn't produce value on his own. Against aggro decks, the life gain is pretty strong. And then against combo decks, he's pretty strong. And the decks that have a lot of, like... Like, niv mizzet control style of decks he's good against, right? But not necessarily this Gonti. Um, Kane's life of this maze mind tome. Um, yep, draw a card of this splendor. Yes. Get you. Oh, Cosmos Elixir goes extremely well here. Mm hmm. Yep, draw a card. Discard. Yup. Beautiful. And, um,. Again, I think I'm supposed to keep this land f just for the Celestis. Man, Celestis did some great, great work here. Cosmos Elixir as well. Mm. Maybe... I am supposed to play this land just so I can... Um... Like, because I'm going to draw a card of the Splendor as well. And I'm going to draw a card of this Cosmos Elixir, so I have enough cards, yeah. I'm going into the I draw enough cards territory right now. No attacks. Well, no point in just running into a death toucher. Draw a card from Cosmos Elixir. They draw a card of Maze Might Tome. Just gets so, so much value. I effect now also gains a lot of value, but uh, kind of not here because we currently have our two draw engines that care about us having a high amount of life. And, um,. I think I'm just going to discard this to the Celestis because every point of life really matters right now. I'm going to dis uh, take up, the, up this blast, so I'm not sure what I want to kill yet, but I can only take it up for one more anyways, and I don't think it will be at, like, don't think it will be very useful at um, one. Okay. Um... Put a charge counter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I have nothing opponent. Do your thing. Um, if they cast non-creatures here, I would be very, very happy because that would give me life. Um, if that includes destroying my Kambal, I would be less happy, but it still would be fine. Um, I want them to play two cards in this turn, so I trigger the Celestis. 
Yep, drain you. Oh, this is this is adding up. The drain is adding up. Antifrex and arena. Oh wow, they gained four life from this maze my tome, right? So so keep that in mind. Nope, doesn't doesn't do anything here. And I get to discard this Eye of Vecna. Man, I'm I'm just like I wasn't really thinking that this would work out the way it would, you know? Draw a card, yes. Discard this Eye of Vecna. Maybe that's criminal, maybe I'm just supposed to let it go, but uh Okay, okay. Uh I have enough I could destroy this maze mine tome, but I still have one more turn, so they don't get the life. I could, and I think I will activate Celeste this year. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's massive. That just clears the board, doesn't it? Don't you, yeah. Um, even, even Steven. Yes, exile, exile everything. Mm hmm. And then get rid of this Ugin, even though, um, even though I lose life from that, I th still think it's absolutely worth to get rid of this Ugin. So now they have a turn where they have the option of, um, yes, draw this card. Um, <laughs> don't need this mana type. Now they have a turn where they can just play a lot of non-creatures without Kambal being on the field currently. Um, but, uh, oh wow, this is, this is a game I like, Okay, their life total is actually under a lot of pressure and them playing this Phyrexian Arena is really like helping them but also at the same time it's killing them because their life total is uh, so much under attack. Mm-hmm. Gaunty, sure. Uh, there, I have so many powerful and impactful cards in my deck, yeah. This is not the worst though. This is not the worst card, I, I have to say that. I think I'm going to crack this blast zone just so they don't get the life of this maze my tome. I think that is very important. Okay, draw. Okay. Um so crack. I think I will start on using the Celestis. No wait. If I crack I, I want to play this Kambal as well. Um yeah. I so yeah, I'm I'm that said on just using this blast zone to get rid of the last uh, like maze my tome charge basically so they do not gain anything from that and um i want to play this cabal for sure that i can't activate celestis i'm missing one mana for that oh, that is fine Yep. And do I play this land out? Probably. Murderous Rider as well, maybe? Or the Heartless Egg? Keep that one up. Mm. Really not feeling the. Um... I, I want to have like a creature on the board that gains me a bit of life, probably. Oh, now, yeah. But I, I don't want to remove this Gaunty so they can't play it again. Um, I think. I think that's valuable. Um, let's see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, trying to kill me. They get drain. like, they probably have a removal spell for this combo, but that still costs them two life, notably. Um, so yeah, they gotta, they gotta be careful here. Um, I think I wanna gain life, actually, because the Guardian, yeah. Yeah, just want to gain life. And they surrender because... Wow! I did not expect to win this one at all, and... The pressure on the life total was just too much. Holy moly, what an insane game. 
we are done with the games. I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did. And Kambal, Console of Allocation. Uh, interesting deck in Historic Bowl, for sure. I didn't expect the annoyance for the opponent that just comes with him, because usually in Control, your goal is to have a commander that um, generates your value, right? So you draw into your win conditions. Then the really good commanders also generate your value while being a win condition, and those top tier decks are, for example, Essica and um, uh, five mana Teferi as well, because they draw cards while also acting as a win condition or like gaining your card advantage. This deck is a bit different in that it is only a win condition, but that also helps you like stabilize in a way. Um, the closest deck to this is probably just Mono Black Turgrid, where it's focused on the backside. Um, may, I made a deck to, for that as well, if you want to check that out. And um, the point is your whole deck... Um, like we, for example, whereas other like black-based control decks can afford to play cards like Dark Ritual that are effectively card disadvantage, this deck cannot because it needs every single bit of card draw that it can get. But in doing so, you have a very solid deck that works without the commander on the field. And it just enhances your game plan um, with the commander on the field. Um, so it has basically positives and negatives. Um, so you basically <laughs> you pick your control commander and like see what's your preference um, for that, right? And I, I think that's just a really really cool uh, like deck building idea overall. Just using the commander to stabilize against aggro decks um, and then just against control decks, even if they don't play many instant sorceries, like in the last uh, grind fest, right? Um, against Gaunti. Uh, well, it's not even instant sorcery, it's just non-creatures, but they played repeatedly creatures, right? But it, it just, like, it was very, very noticeable for the opponent. And um, these life gain synergy draw effects, like Sigurdus Splendor and Cosmos Elixir, were really pulling their weight there. Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> enough of the great matches, let's go into the great deck, and um, if you want to play this deck on a budget, what can you cut, what do you need? Uh, sadly, this is one of the piles again, where it's getting pretty expensive. Uh, this deck is not as bad on the mana um, as some other decks. Uh, you can get away with a bunch of dual lands. Um, like, if you want to like get a utility land, probably get the blasts on a castle lock win. But I think you can just get away with a common and uncommon mana base. And um, then it's just about like distribution and percentages. You want to keep them intact and you want to basically replace what you don't have with similar cards. For example, uh, cheap interaction, you want a lot of that. So what, uh, Inquisition, Thoughtseize, uh, Fateful Absence, Despark, right? Those fall into the cheap interaction category. But you can also just run other cheap interactive cards uh, in this deck and replace them with that if you don't have these copies uh, uh, co copies of these cards. You want to have card advantage engines. Uh, Celestis, for example, is a mana rock that is a card advantage engine. Um, it's not like you can replace this with a mana rock, but I see it actually more of a card advantage engine, especially in that last game where it like, holy moly, we drew so many card of Celestis, right? Um, Maze Mind Tome is more like straight up card advantage, right? Uh, Treasure Map is also clear card advantage, pretty much Cosmos Elixir. So you want to have some card advantage engines, um, but also Planeswalker can basically double dip as win conditions and card advantage engines. Like for example, cards like Liliana Dreadhorde, general, like great finisher, but also just draws you a ton of cards. Um, yeah, you want board wipes, but you don't necessarily need these board wipes. Um, and you want finishers, but you don't necessarily need these finishers. You need, I'd say like, if you are missing half of these, it's getting a bit dicey. 
but uh, anything like if you if you only need need like 30 percent or something like that yeah sure you, i think you can find replacements for those um i do play search for glory demonic bargain and grim tutor to tutor for answers demonic bargain works in this deck because we have a lot of cards that are similar right for example where i search for glory to for a bolus a citadel if that was a demonic bargain and would have exiled the citadel i think i would have still like done a like had a pretty great chance at like another um, engine like i could have went for a cruel reality um to just close the game out instead of just going with card advantage on bolus the citadel like a lot lots and lots of interchangeable pieces basically there right uh, so that is why demonic bargain works this is not a combo deck and he, we actually just use it for value and we have redundant cards um to search for even if just one or two uh, copies of a certain thing that we want to have for example we want to have a board wipe if one or two board wipes get um, exiled that's not a problem we have a third or a fourth one right um yeah overall a uh, pretty pretty fun deck uh i hope you enjoyed today's video and uh, i will see you tomorrow